I'm I'm passionate about talking about I think my story not out of ego but out of um anybody can do it and you know you have mm-hmm. you know the the the, the um, for, how you built it you, the fortitude you need yeah. to, to yeah. make it as a bootstrap yeah i have so a good like, question oh, for that thing. you uh, you actually prompted I, all i think about all day is what what are the best questions to elicit great answers and stories and you doing the research for you elicited a question for me that is in my mind one of my favorite questions that i have that cool. i'm going to ask you yeah um, awesome. and i'm going to put it on every future interview so and it's on this topic so your story so i'll we'll talk about that for sure oh, awesome yeah, yeah that sounds great um yeah i've right. got nothing i mean i you know bootstrapping i love talking about that and okay. and you know right now i'm super into trying to scale the business i'm yeah. you know hiring I, yeah, I'm about to hire a woman today. She'll be a, you know, the second person we've hired in the past week. I mean, we're we're working on culture and and you know, really trying to, you know, for me, what I see a lot of startups and entrepreneurs they get yeah. stuck in their business, you know, trying to get out of being stuck, trying to see the big picture, mm-hmm. and trying to constantly improve. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I'm I I I've, I've really considered myself a study of the craft. Yeah. of running a company. Yeah. And I don't think I did that for a long time. And and yeah. once we started, once I started to do that, things changed dramatically. Yeah. So I was going to wait for the, yeah, I'm going to, you know, actually introduce you, but I'm just going to go with this question now because we're right into it. And um, I'm not going to wait for the middle, but, but the question that you made me think of that I love is what have you sacrificed? It's a good question. I hate you for asking it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. it's a, it's a great question. I I would say in the early yeah, you know, there's there's a can I rewind and I yeah. don't know if we're going to how yeah. we're going to get to this or if we get I'll to it all. I'll just introduce you in a bit, but just go on. You're you're riffing on. I love how you talk about scale and culture and that's top of mind because that's real stuff that businesses are thinking about. So I'll, yeah. I want to include that. Yeah. So when I when I started, you know, the the company, I think there's three phases of my business. Yeah. First phase was hobby phase. Second phase was lifestyle phase. Four phases, lifestyle phase. Mm-hmm. Third phase was no life phase, and the fourth, isn't the whole phase no life phase? No, it doesn't no. have to. It the doesn't hobby, have to. the hobby phase, you were probably working pretty hard too. No. Yes. Okay. We'll we'll, we'll get into that. Anyways, and the, yeah. And the fourth yeah. phase uh, is. Um, scaling, yeah, and 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 so you know, first phase, hobby phase. Since you you brought it back up, yeah, um, I was working a full time job, was doing this on nights and weekends. What were you doing but, at the time? Was this when you were a teacher, the special I was ed teacher, special ed? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, was I have a lot of questions ed. about that, but yeah. Oh yeah, go yeah. go ahead. Yeah. you know, like, I, is this a G, rated G or a rated R podcast? It, it's whatever it is. So for some people, it's R. For some people, it's G. So if it's, it's R I, for you, then that's fine. My first, you know, my first day on the job, I, I show up, I, I'm a sub teacher. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect. I've never done this before. I walk into the classroom and, uh, a, a boy walks in, um, and all the classrooms had, had water, water, uh, coolers, uh, in them. He walks in, he sees me, he walks up to the water cooler and starts humping it. Wow. And welcome I, to your first day. <laughs> that that was a sign. It was a sign. Did I, you I just walk point. off and be like, okay, this is not for me? I just started cracking oh, up and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, is this what I'm going to be dealing with? Great. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, so I was teaching um, and, and I, I uh, you know, nights and weekends. Yeah, I, I, I was working. It was really this experiment back then. It was a hobby. It was, you know, I'm, I'm testing the waters, trying to figure it out. And I did that for two years until I quit the job, got mm-hmm. married, moved to Colorado, and moved into the next phase, which was lifestyle business. Yeah. So before you move to the next phase, what inspired you to even start that? You know, what was your dream at that moment to This is an interview that's completely yeah. being recorded out of order. That's cool. That's cool. I love it. It's yeah. so cool. Um the uh, We'll circle back to whatever we'll circle back to. <laughs> it's a, this is fun. Um I started, I was, I was, you know, I, I grew up in New York, um, right. New York, the culture in New York is a money culture. It is all about, you know, um, it's, you need money to, to survive in New yeah. York. So, yeah. you know, inherently it becomes this money culture. 
uh, I was a you know I, I I was a stock trader in New York. I grew up around families and businesses. I was infatuated right. and obsessed with um, how people made money and how people built businesses. And you know I, I couldn't wait every year for the for the Forbes list of the richest people uh, b- because uh, not because I was like oh my god these guys are so cool. It was uh, it was a study guide. It was how do I how they do it? How do I emulate them? Yeah. You know what made them so successful and for me the stories that were exciting were were the self-made stories the stories of the guy who hey he started a farm you know built from one plot to 10 to 20 to 50 and then you know all of a sudden you know he he started buying out buying out other farms that stuff got me going who did Um, you look up to at that moment like when you were looking at the forbes list does does anyone stick out i mean there was nobody specifically i i think buffett was probably the most interesting to me I, i I liked his philosophies, yeah. but uh, beyond that, I mean, I, I think everybody was fascinating because, except you know, of course, the people who inherit their money, uh, but you know, the people who built these from the know, ground up empires, yeah, it was really fascinating. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand, and right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Wise here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, Josh Dorkin, A Bigger Pockets, and many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today we have Josh Dorkin. He's founder of BiggerPockets.com and we were just talking about the Forbes list and the impressive people who start things from scratch and he started the site from scratch over 10 years ago and has now as i read on the site today 440,000 members they've grown to be one of the largest and most reputable real estate community on the internet with a forum that has over 900,000 posts oh no more than that more than that one seven one point wow two to three thousand new posts a day wow they hold the number one real estate podcast on iTunes. They track more than 1,000 new members a day and help change people's lives to gain their own financial freedom through real estate. Josh, thanks for joining me. Oh, man. You mentioned me with the guy who founded Atari. That's cool. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about New York. Yeah. And so after New York, so at that time, what did you want to be when you grew up? Okay. So I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, I've always wanted to be a politician. Let, let's start really? there. Like, yeah, I never screwed around in high school. I never, I screwed around in high school. I never screwed around too much, and I never did in in, in a way where I was going to get caught. But, but I, you know, I was always very protective of protective of my reputation mm-hmm. uh, because I was like, well, you know, one day I'm going to need this. Um, You're like, I'm going to be the president one day. I don't yeah, want and, dirt and on iro- me. ironically, you know, I go and I look at the people who run for office, and I'm like, I should have had a little more fun <laughs> back in the day, but. Uh, it was that, and then, you know, my mom was a very successful businesswoman. Mm. My, what did, dad she, do? What did she do? Uh, she ran a fur business. Uh, fur. She, built, she was mm. the biggest, uh, probably one of the biggest furriers in the world, and she was a woman, wow. uh, obviously, uh, yeah. in, in a man's world. And yeah. that was so exciting to, to see her, um, yeah. to, to really crush What did you it. learn from her? Um, passion. Um, be yourself. Did you help in that business at all? Like, hey, carry these furs to this side of the city. Oh, yeah. what, what did you do? I mean, I, I used to I used to do deliveries. Uh, I would clean coats. I would um, I learned how to sew. I mean, I would never sew an actual coat. That would be a bad idea. But you know, I was usually the little rug rat with my brother running around and you know being cute and getting customers you know excited. Mm. Um, but it was you know it was really fun to watch from the inside. You know, somebody hustle. I think hustle is probably the other thing that I really, really learned yeah. from my mom. I what did your she, mom do? What did you see that, that she did that she, was hustle? She, she worked. You know, she worked her butt off. Yeah. She never complained about it. Um, uh, and, and she was a trendsetter too. So that, you know, being, being creative, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, she, uh, and, and obviously the fur business take, took a huge decline and, you know, she, she's been retired for many, many years. Yeah. And, you know, I know some of your listeners probably hate me already because now Why? I was Animal the rights guy. or something? Yeah. But uh, he, she, uh, in the 80s, I think it was like 84, 85, uh, 
the the Cabbage Patch Kids came out, and they were the, the most popular right. things on the planet. Sure. I mean, this was the biggest trend ever. Yeah, um, I think it was like the first big trend, and uh, so Cabbage Patch Kids Kids come out, and my mom has this crazy idea. You know what? Let's get PR. Let's build our business. Let's start making fur coats for Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> That's hilarious. My mom ended up on Lifestyles and the Rich and Famous, wow. on the Maury Povich show, Connie Chung. I mean, she was like, that is so she was cool. on Joan Rivers, uh, National Enquirer. It was everywhere. Her with these, yeah. these, uh, these uh, dolls in fur coats, and I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was so viral. It was so yeah. exciting. Uh, I think she attempted doing the same with the couch potato dolls um, when those were super hot. I think that failed pretty badly, <laughs> but. Uh, the Cabbage Patch things yeah. uh, kids Took thing off. Was, was amazing. Wow. And, um, so, yeah, I mean, I just I learned so much just watching her and yeah. being herself and, you know, being friendly and never, never kind of hiding yeah. uh, who she was, being true to, to what she was trying to do. Yeah. And, and that to me was very inspiring. Yeah. And I want to talk about your balance. But what do you think? I mean, it's tough enough being a mom. Right. And then she's running this huge business. How did she do it all? Um. You know, we we had a we def we had I mean, a live-in. She's to put up with you and your brother, and like that's yeah. probably a handful. But we, uh, yeah, don't judge. Yeah, don't judge. We <laughs> we had a we had a live-in uh, nanny who you know would help uh, help cook and things like that. So you know, she'd sometimes come home from work at you know six o'clock. I, I remember Wednesdays. I think the off, uh, the store was open till nine, so she was out from it's you tough. know seven eight till yeah. nine at night. Yeah, it was hard. It's a so, long I mean, day. There was a sacrifice, but you know, yeah. for us, we'd come, we'd come home. We'd oftentimes go to the store and hang out with her at the store. Yeah. So I learned, you know, I learned about business. I got to earn money. Um, yeah. And you were around it. You were an out, around entrepreneurship. Yeah, and you know that it went generations back. My my grandfather was had a fur company. My mm. mom learned from him. We had bakers in the family. So you know, we all the way back, we were we were entrepreneurs. Yeah. So, but you wanted to be a politician. Well, I, I, one day I would become a politician. Mm. I, that was in my mind. In gotcha. college, I got into politics. I, I, I think I wanted to get into business. Um, I didn't know what the hell I wanted. I was yeah. you know, 15, 17, 20, 25, 30. Yeah. You know, you don't know what you're doing until right. you, you get a little more well, it's not, Even then, it's just like I think I remember your major was like marketing and political science. So you were doing kind of both of them, right? Well, so I went, to, well, I went into college with a, um, to the business school. And I, th- I think it was the uh, second half of the second semester, I said, I can't do this anymore. I want to get the hell out. Hmm. I hated the business Why? school. Uh, I hated the business school because it was so cutthroat. The kids who had gone into the business school were, I mean, very, very stereotypical hmm. uh, business school kids. You, you know, dog eat dog kind of people, you know, screw you. Even in school. Um, oh, yeah. It was crazy. I was like, I hate this. I'm out. So I'd gotten, you know, after two semesters, I'd gotten my basic classes. I was like, what am I going to do? Oh, let me go take psychology. I love psychology. Yeah, but I'm never going to have a career in psychology. But let me learn a few things. Now nah, I'm wasting time and money. I'm going to go into anthropology because it's exciting. I want to be Indiana Jones. You know, that, <laughs> that came to the same decision by my third class. Um, okay, you know what? Poli sci. I got a major in poli sci, knocked it out. I was always interested in it. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I got tons of time left before I graduate. I'm going to go back to B school. I'm going to try it again. Mm-hmm. So I went back and I, you know, before my four years were up, um, I, I went into marketing and I found this passion for marketing. Um, finished my classes. Half my classes were these were MBA level classes. It was it was a blast. It was so much fun. And I think it was um, by then I realized like. I didn't really give a crap what the other people were doing. I was going to kind of do live my life and do what I did by my rules. So, you know, if everybody else was being scummy, that's okay. They could be scummy. I'm not going to be scummy. Right. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to be Which translates me. into kind of your philosophy behind bigger pockets too. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And th- I like hearing this background. I mean, you know, obviously we'll talk about bigger pockets because it goes into what we were talking about in the very beginning about really talking about your story and someone doesn't have to follow this linear path to right. what they want to do. They kind of, go all over the place yep. and that's inspiring you know it is i i think i think we all struggle i mean i i i don't know a lot of people that knew what they were going to do at 12 or 15 or 20 and started doing it and 20 30 years later are still doing it and loving it 
um, I, I think, you know, it's life, life is a, is a journey and, and we find our way. And, and so, you know, you, as long as you're learning along the way and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't, I think that's the most important part. I, most people who I, I think find themselves unhappy are, are those that are afraid to be introspective or don't want to be introspective, don't want to look uh, at themselves at, you know, their pluses, their minuses. I mean, I, I, I remember distinctly, I don't know if it was not that distinct because I, I can't get it exactly right, but I don't know. it was college or high school. Yeah. I mean, we're talking a little ways back, so I'll, I'll give you 20 that. 20 plus years. Right, yeah, right. 20 years or so. Um, there was a conversation with some friends and I remember somebody, it was college, somebody had said to me, Josh, you know, you're being really annoying. And first I was offended and I almost did the, you know, you're annoying, you know, that you know, stupid childish crap. And then I was like, oh, this is one of my closest friends in the world. Hmm. They're telling me I'm being annoying. And then I said, okay, I, I, I get it. I'm being annoying. Do I do that a lot? It's like, yeah. What were you doing? I do that a lot. I, I think I was just, I was either being a naysayer or critical. There was, you know, one of those, you know, hmm. typical Jewish trends that you inherit. Um, but uh, I, I kept doing it and kept doing it. And you're like, I, I noticed like it kept coming up every time it would happen. And when I looked back. Because he pointed out to you, you just kept noticing it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. I've got to stop doing this. I have to stop doing this. How could I better myself hmm. uh, if, if I'm not fixing myself? Right. And so it led me to start asking people, my friends, other people, you know, how, what else am I doing that's annoying? What else do you hate about me? And, you know, some things I said, screw it. That I love that. And right. other things I was like, wow, you know what? Can I improve upon that? Hmm. Um, will that make me a better person for, for me, for other people, for my relationships? And, and you know, since then, it's been a, I've been a work in progress. I, 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 and, you know, every day, particularly lately, I've really started to kind of refocus on self-improvement yeah. uh, just for lots of reasons. And um, I think it's amazing. I, I, you know, I used to bash people who were like, oh, you know, oh, you, hey, I'm going to go fix myself. You know, I... You got to fix yourself. We all have right. crap. And, and that was and, your phase where when you were being annoying, you used to bash those people, right? And then you yeah. you improved yourself. And yeah, you were annoying, weren't you? I'm sure. I still am, probably <laughs> in many ways. <laughs> but so so you know that's sort of what you do with the site too, right? I mean, you take a lot of feedback. What feedback have you taken that was hard to take on bigger pockets? Um, because it is like I, your baby I, in a sense too. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. But I, you know. I don't I know there have been moments when people have said, you know, hey, this this isn't good or that's not good. I don't think I've ever been offended. Yeah. Uh, I think there's been there's certainly been arguments where I've been passionate, hey, this is the way it has to be yeah. and they're like, "Well, we don't like it." And you're like, you know, then you kind of get, "Oh, well, you know, that that hurts." But I I I think for me it's always been I'm going to set this tone. I'm going to set the tone for what this thing's going to be. Uh, I'm going to set the guidelines. I'm going to set the philosophy and then we're going to just go with it and we're going to piss people yeah. off. And, and it, you know, the very early, very, very beginning. I mean, like I had more haters and lovers for sure. Why is that? Why did they hate? Because I upended what was happening. Uh, mm. you know, the industry that you were uh, pointing I, out what was wrong with the industry. I was, and that was really risky. And, and so, um, it, it upset a lot of folks. Um, and, um, but that's okay. You know, I, I think, you know, society and the world needs people to be able to, to do that and, and stand up. And, and so, you know, we said, hey, we're going to build a site that's going to be true to people, true to our users, that's not going to take advantage of people. Um, and, I, you know, let's kind of backstory. Bigger Pockets was started uh, really quickly. I was a real estate investor, uh, bought some property, made a bunch of mistakes. I'm cutting it really short. Um, well, and, well, I'm coming back to it anyway. So all right, go, realized go that yeah. I needed I needed help. When I looked to see who would help me, uh, I saw an industry that was dominated by kind of these information peddlers yeah. that I that I believed and still believe uh, are, take advantage of people. Right. And so, because I didn't have any faith in who they were um, and what their their moral value or moral compass was, I I knew that I couldn't trust the information that I was getting. Um, that, and that was me. Listen, I, I'm not saying all the stuff they put out is bad. I'm just saying for me personally, I, right. I didn't, it wasn't my thing. So 
I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to start a, a forum, I'm going to start a community where I could get answers that I know I can trust, yeah. um, where I feel comfortable, I feel like I'm not being taken advantage of, I feel yeah. like I'm not being, you know, upsold to, you know, be broke uh, before I even know anything about anything. Right. And um, thus was born Bigger Pockets, this place where I could get answers for myself. Um, and it transformed, you know, later it was, I realized very quickly it was helping other people. And so the hobby, you know, this, this selfish quote unquote selfish thing became uh, a hobby where I'm helping other people become successful and I'm, I'm getting good feelings out of it. And I'm like, Oh, this is cool. And I just played around for years trying to learn how to build a community. I mean, there was no business plan. There was Josh honing his craft in the art of building an amazing community. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, what was the hardest thing for you, like you said, when you know you're going to get some backlash when you say certain things in an industry? What was yeah. the hardest for you to actually come out and say because you kind of realize that there's going to be some backlash with this? Um, you know, I, I think I don't know that there, you know, I got a big mouth. Yeah. And, and, and I, w- I would say I love your questions, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. You're good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, seriously. From a fellow uh, podcaster, yeah, I appreciate that. No, yeah, I, I, I dig it. Um, I, you because know, the I pioneer think I was, always I think ends I was up afraid with that. I was. Yeah. I think I was afraid that I was letting people down more than anything. You mean um, you picture yourself? If I don't say something, I'm letting people down. I think there was some of that, and I, and I think you know, I was letting myself down if I wasn't brave enough to, to mm, say exactly what I thought and I was being political in certain things. And it wasn't just me. Re- remember, I, you know, now we've got a community. So right. it's other people talking and other people saying things. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, you fast forward. You, know, you take a stand, though, and it comes back on you, you know, whether I, it's good or bad. And it's not always sure. easy, even though it's right. I think... You know, I, I think there's a certain amount of bravery that you need in order to um, take a position on anything in life, right? Yeah. And, and and so when we took a position, um, uh, you know, against a certain path, um, that was challenging. But you know, remember that wasn't the that was that was just a tiny piece of the puzzle. You know, we're focusing on just that one position. Yeah. The other part of the puzzle was. Um, anybody can be successful in this industry. That was the vast, vast part of it. And there was nothing scary about that at all. You know, that was, hey, listen, you know, if we, if, if we're smart about what we do, if we, uh, we as the community are, are um, informed, we're all going to grow together. We're all going to be successful together. So let's build a place where, you know, there's no hierarchies. There's no like, you know, hey, I'm smarter than you and, you know, you just right. said something stupid. Let's create yeah. a place where yeah. everybody's equal yeah. and and we're all going to rise yeah. up. And, and yeah. that's what we've seen. I that's mean, what I like about your podcast too, though, because you bring people on who've done their first deal to hundreds of millions. So it's yeah. all kind of – you bring that level playing field there. It's not like yeah. you're only featuring certain types of people or, or people that hit a certain level. Yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll interview a guy who's done hundreds of millions in real estate and yeah. then a best-selling real, uh, author, and then we'll follow it up by a guy who just bought his first rental property. Right. Um, and People and are I, just as excited about that probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What's been we'll the be, most popular episode? What, what should, what's hit uh, home for the audience? Our most popular show yeah. was uh, uh, Blown Up Your I, – I forget the exact title. It was our Grant Cardone show, mm. the author of the 10X Rule. 10X Rule, okay. Um, that was that was big. Uh, a, a show we did on uh, no money, uh, investing with no uh, no and low money. Uh, That's down, always popular, right? <laughs> was was really popular. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, you know, there's there's different approaches, right? You know, yeah. I think the approach that people are s- sold on and pitched on with no money is you, you know you could be rich tomorrow. You don't need yeah. any money, and everyone's like, oh, that's a scam, and and rightly so. They should be really nervous and. Uh, worried about somebody right. who says you're going to be rich tomorrow about anything. Right. Um, you know, our approach is there's different, you know, there's various pathways that you can go um, to build wealth in real estate. Um, there's creative strategies where you're, you know, whether it's partnering yeah. or finding other yeah. people who can provide the money. You can't buy real estate with nothing. Right. Um, but you, you got to be smart and, and, and uh, you know. What was the biggest like take that? home for that one? The one that was no money or low money. What's a maybe a misconception or or a big take home from that 
particular the, session? You know, because people uh, do their guard goes up when they hear that, right? I, I I'd say we uh, everybody everybody knows somebody who has money. It doesn't matter how broke you are. You know somebody who has money, and wh- whether it's the guy who works, you know, at a certain shop, or the owner of the the, the corner store, yeah. or, or whoever, we all know somebody. Yeah. And so, if you go and you find an opportunity, and you know, we don't just find opportunities blink and we know what they are. We have to actually learn how to evaluate real estate deals, mm-hmm. understand the numbers. You have to be informed. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, which is one of the other. Uh, parts of the story that's interesting be- because you know there's an entrenched part of our business, real estate agents, where the vast majority are not informed, and they end up, uh, you know, promoting something of, that they maybe don't balance. know enough about. Exactly, you yeah. know, they don't have enough information, and they pu- end up putting people into deals that are not deals. Yeah. Um, so the uninformed are helping the uninformed, and that's problematic. Mm. Uh, but but um, the so you're saying people know someone who's. Has has money. Yeah. So if I go and I find a great real estate deal, the numbers are awesome, and I don't have the funds, I can go and approach my friend who yeah. has money and gotcha. say, "Hey, listen, here's the deal. Here are the numbers. Look at this. Let's go yeah. in together. You know, let's go fifty yeah. fifty. Let's gotcha. go seventy thirty. You're in your way, yeah. and let's get into bed and 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 work this. Yeah. And and you know, you yeah. just did no money deal. Right. And so by also by people learning through bigger pockets, they kind of learn how to evaluate those things yep. and then they can go to maybe someone on bigger pockets or someone not and be able to do something with no money or very low money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, and your best network for finding people is, is your network. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. yeah. So take me back to your first real estate deal. Okay. Um, were you in uh, California? You were California. You were a special ed teacher at the time. Well, my first property was a condo. I mean, okay. I bought a condo in, in, in Los Angeles. Um, uh, it, I, I had just moved out. I, I'd gone out to California what? to, yeah. I, I was in the real estate. I was in the real estate business. I was in the entertainment business at right. this point. Um, so what did you, did you move out there? What did you want to do? Do you want to be in a I was movie? Acting. What did you want to, I wanted to, I wanted to explore the entertainment business and build somehow grow in the entertainment business. I, I yeah. was in New York. I was acting. I was doing independent film. I produced a feature film, produced a short film, mm. you know, interned at, at agencies and, and did all this stuff to, to kind of hone my craft. I mean, I, I started at zero. I wanted to learn that business. Mm. Here's, here's an interesting tidbit that yeah. maybe a lot of people don't know. Yeah. I said, I need to start this, uh, start and learn this from the ground up. So I took the coolest job you could possibly take. It, it's akin to like the garbage man. It's, okay. Let's, you know, we just lost all of our garbage men listeners. Um, but <laughs> they probably I make better money. So they, they make good money. They, yeah. They make really good money, yeah. by the way. Yeah. But I, I was an extra in a student film. I wanted to learn so bad the industry. I mm. said, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to start at a student film that pays you nothing. Not only am I going to go on a student film that pays you nothing, but I'm going to do extra work, like the lowest of the low, and just so I can watch, see how sets work, see how yeah. people uh, you know, interact and fi- learn who's who yeah. so I can go. I thought you were going to say something way worse. That's actually pretty smart oh, because yeah. you can get an acting gig right off the bat and not have to do those lower level things where you're getting people coffee oh yeah well so yeah. i learned i yeah. learned business from from that side yeah. and you know i said you know i want to study um i i want to do student films also because the student filmmakers of today are the big right. paid directors of tomorrow right so if i get involved and start to work on student films as an actor help them out on production do other stuff you know in 10 years, 15 yeah. years. That's what we gonna... define as a long-term play for sure. Well, yeah, Josh. I plant yeah. seeds, man. Yeah. I plant seeds. So yeah, that was, that was kind of the path. And little by little, I, I learned the business. I said, okay, I had enough tools to get to California, went out to visit, called my mom, said, mom, I'm going to come home. I'm going to pack my stuff in seven days. I'm out of here. I love oh. you, but you know, no way that's You're not disowned. happening. You're disowned. <laughs> yeah. And I got in the car and I drove to California. didn't wow. have a place to stay, but I had, save money working for her, planting my own seeds financially. Um, uh, I'd made some money uh, after college. I was a, a stock trader. I, you know, I was always fairly savvy with money. Yeah. Uh, moved to California, 
ended up crashing on somebody's couch, a buddy's couch for a month and searched and found a condo that was in an area that was hot, that was growing. Um, you know, I, it, it seemed like a great play, seemed like a great buy. The market was going well. I That's impressive it. that you bought it at that moment. I bought it a month after moving to wow. California. That takes some guts, I think. Or stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> that too. And, and that was my first real estate. I sold that. Uh, I paid 250 I think 240 or 250 I sold it a few years later for like three, I think 360, 390, something wow. like that. You're like, I could, I, get, I could do this all day uh, long. Had I held it, at, at its high, it was worth probably 550, yeah. six. Um, so I, I had sold, I thought, I saw the, the market in California and I was like, this market's crazy. This thing is a bubble, you know. Oh, you knew that the Oh, time. yeah. Well, yeah. The, for, for me, one of the, the, the famous stories was a friend of mine was talking about a police officer who had just bought this million dollar house. And I said, unless this guy is, you know, is skimming, you know, s- some of the some of the drug busts or something. Right. How is this he doing is that? This is incomprehensible right. that a police officer and frankly, you know, police officers should be making enough money so they can buy million dollar houses uh, in lots of but places. But the reality is, yeah, they're they're but public they servants, they're paid by the, yeah, right. they don't and make so as the, much. The fact that they were able, to, this guy was able to buy a house, and and that the lenders were yeah. were willing to lend out, uh, and and let him actually do that, um, I knew we were in a lot of trouble. And I got, you know, that was right around the time where, you know, I was like, I, I think I need to get out. I think my really? you know, market's going to turn. Now I was very early. I was like four or five years early. Right. Um, but I was very very skeptical, very very nervous uh, about the market. Uh, b- because you know it was just going up like gangbusters, and everybody was going crazy, excited about how much money they were making, and that's a bad sign. I mean, a few years later, though, you go from buying a property for over a hundred thousand dollars more, right? I bought than what you paid. So, what was did, were you ready to do your next real estate deal after that, or I? Well, so the the story of of. You know, kind of really getting into the investing side was, uh, you know, my brother had approached me and he had bought a bunch of rental properties. Was he in, in California or in New York? He was in Missouri. Missouri, okay. And he had bought a bunch of property and, you know, he told me about him and I was like very excited for him and he was doing well. And he said, Josh, you know, you should do it. You've got a little money on the side. You know, why not get in? And I was like, oh, okay, let's do it. I'm smart. I can evaluate a deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I decided to buy um, some some lower grade properties and and not such great areas. And I lived in St. Louis for a little bit. I hope was it not in East St. Louis? I hope it was South 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 City. Um, okay. Not not the not the best. Right. Uh, why'd you live in St. Louis? I went to chiropractic school in St. Louis. Uh, actually, oh, I, went to, I went to Wash U. So. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I but I was in California. So, so here's the problem. I'm 2,000 miles away. Right. I can't go and readily see the property. It's a pain in the you-know-what to come out and, and make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. I relied on property managers to, to have my back and take care of me. And one by one by one, um, they were not. And so I quickly found myself in trouble and realized, oh, oh this, this, this isn't as easy as it seems. Oh, or it would have been a hell of a lot easier if I had bought a property down the block yeah. for me. Was your brother on site at all or was he? He was there. I mean, he, yeah. he was absolutely helpful. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I, he, he can't be responsible for, for me and my business. Right. And, and, and so, um, or he could have been, but you know, um, uh, so I'm now stuck with a situation yeah. where I don't know where to go. Yeah, I don't know where to turn. Right. What do I do? I don't know how to manage. Right. I'm going to ask, what do you do? Right. Yeah. So again, I, I, I go, I look at the landscape, there's books and there's websites and all this stuff. And they were all, uh, you know, the vast majority of them were, were written by or the, or the information out there was from this kind of core groups, really small group of people um, who, you know, these quote unquote real estate gurus, the guys who are on TV late at night with the babes. Right. And infomercial. The and yeah. The infomercial guys. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, these are the guys who are own the information space. Yeah. And and then there's websites that aren't owned by them but you know they're pitching and peddling them. And I was like this is crazy. I I I just I don't trust 
again, like we talked about earlier, I don't yeah. necessarily trust it. I need a place where I personally feel at home. I feel comfortable. What do I do? Back in college, I'd been building websites. Another part of my story. Yeah, I've done a lot of things. Um, uh, built websites for fun, uh, uh, and 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 uh, 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 so I had the skill to to be able to do it. Yeah. And so I just started building bigger pockets. Yeah. And so at the Best, time, what did it look like? What was the first? It was first uh, version of it. I was really excited, by the way, when I got my first user and my second user, and my fifth and my fifth. Bigger pockets is a good domain. So when did you get that? I believe it was oh four. So I originally. The domain was originally, the name came from a good friend of mine, Sean Sims, who ha had done this independent film, and he played this hustler, basically, like drug dealer, you know, kind, kind of guy, and you know, he's he's on this couch, and he's it was just cheesy and terrible, like most of the stuff that we did back in the day, but he's like trying to reach in his pocket to pull out this wad of cash. And he finally gets it out, and the line is like, "Oh man, I got to get bigger pockets. I got to get some bigger pockets." And <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I love that! I love that!" And, and and so the idea was, I I I registered it with this domain could be used for anything. It could be used for yeah. anything having to do with you know building wealth, making right. money, anything financial wealth. Yeah, I was in the entertainment business. Um, so I actually started it as let me make this a place for people in the entertainment business. Um, and, you know, when I got into real estate, I was like, oh, this applies so much better for real estate. This makes so much more sense. And so I, I just changed it uh, to a real estate site because I had a need for a domain. The domain was perfect. And uh, thus, the, the, the modern day Bigger Pockets yeah. was born. So I want to get in the first version of Bigger Pockets, but I have to ask because there is a really good fun fact that you have. Oh, yeah. Segwaying from the acting days and okay. it involves Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, I uh, I I did a a bit bit part on on Saturday Night Live uh, with with uh, Jerry Seinfeld. It, that sounds it was, big. That sounds really big. It's not. Uh, yeah, it it's not big. <laughs> um, but I was I was part of it. Was Jerry Tim Meadows? Um, I think Horatio Sands. I mean, you know that that kind of crew. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were the Jewish basketball team. And I think uh, we were. Tr he was trying to impress. Um, Mary Catherine Gallagher, Molly Shannon, <laughs> yes. and so at, in the final version, the yeah. TV version, yeah. you know, you can uh, you can just barely see the side of my face, but yeah. um, it was so much fun, and and I mean, I had done a, a few little bit gigs on SNL with yeah. like ben, ben Affleck, I forget who else, but it was. Uh, I'm gonna find that. I'm gonna find yeah. it if they yeah. tell me to take it down. I'll take it down, but <laughs> um, that's fine. So the first version of the site, what was it? What were you? It, what were you trying to do? It was um, I had gone and collated a bunch of resources uh, that I thought would be helpful to me. Yeah. Um, built a bunch of just page, you know, directories of of resources that, yeah, as I was exploring. So you were documenting sort of so that you had it there so you could reference it. Exactly. And then I built a forum. Uh, I didn't even build the forum. I found some open source software, uh, put up a forum called the Bigger Pockets, and. Um, now I had a bunch of resource pages and a forum and there was me and myself and I, you know, hanging out. So, yeah. Uh, and I've heard you I, say many times that telling people don't create a forum. Oh, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> it's, I mean, like it's, it's not. Are a you only saying that because you had to do it from scratch and there wasn't like easy software to no, there was plug software. in? Oh, there was. Okay. No, there was software. It, it's, um, it's impossibly hard to build a good community. Yeah. Um, I, I, I will say, you know, if you want to build one, give it a shot. Yeah. It's Saying from someone who has 440,000 members. And, you know, yeah, one yeah. point something million posts. You know, right. it, it's, it's impossibly hard. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, creating a culture is impossibly hard. Yeah. And dealing with all the spam and the junk and yeah. the crap that, that kind of comes in is impossibly hard. Yeah. And frankly, it's not a great business model. Uh, it's not a great business model. So, um, you know, without a doubt, if somebody's like, oh, I've got this great business idea, I'm going to create a forum. Yeah, don't, <laughs> I'd say reevaluate. And I've been told that by lots of people. So along yeah. the way, you know, I've got a forum. Yeah, what were know, they telling you? Now I got to attract users. I figured that out. And yeah. now we're, you know, posting and we're creating this community and vibe and culture. And okay, we've got that. 
and then face uh, MySpace, Facebook, yeah, no, MySpace comes out. MySpace sure. is the hottest thing since sliced bread yeah, now. I remember so that. We're, yeah, we're dating ourselves. Talk here. about spam, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, what if we turn this forum into a social network with a forum? And and so I tried to build out the social network, and I paid all these people overseas, and it was a failure, complete an utter failure. Spent way too much money. And I like, you know, almost shut down then. Um, uh, what kept to, you from shutting down then? I don't stop. I, I don't like to lose. Yeah. Um, I, 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 Where do I you get that from? Probably, you, you know. Is your brother older or younger? He's older. He's older, okay. He used to kick my ass. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so I, I, I've, always, I've always had, and I think I get some of it from my, from my family, but I, I think a lot of it's just this natural thing I was born with. Like, I'm I'm a little guy. I'm not a big dude. I'm you know I'm five eight and a half. And you I, look you much know. bigger because of standing desk. I think oh, yeah, like six four. I weigh I weigh a hundred pounds soaking wet. <laughs> and but you know put me on any field, put me on any court, mm, put me like in Rudy. Any athletic endeavor. No, I wasn't Rudy. Oh, Don't okay. give me that. No, I no, mean that, I, that mindset. Not that you weren't like Rudy, like <laughs> in the sense you're gonna make Notre Dame, but but that mindset of the tenaciousness. I, I was the guy who who went out every single time, two hundred percent, every single time. And so in everything that I do, mm-hmm. I do it at two hundred percent. I think a hundred percent is failing. I've mm-hmm. always thought that right. if I'm playing or doing something at a hundred percent, I might as well not do it. it. Has always been my philosophy. Mm-hmm. So why didn't I quit? Um, because people wanted me to quit. So that fueled you. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't 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 push my buttons, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean. So you went uh, from the forum trying to build out the social network that didn't work. It didn't work, and yeah. then it then it did work, and you know I I hit it with a different approach instead of doing it all at once. I started to build it little little by little by little, um, and then you know I'm, I'm I'm in Colorado. I'm talking to some you know pow- of the power players and the in the uh, you know financing and and entrepreneur community here and i had several people say you know what are you doing you should stop you should quit you know you're you're not making enough money this yeah. thing is doesn't seem like it's got enough legs right you know you need to rethink this yeah. and i i was like ah screw those guys you know what do they know you know uh, and and um you know in retrospect they were right um i'm glad they said what they said because it fueled me to right. prove them wrong right um uh, had had I not been as stubborn and stupid as I am, um, I probably should have quit. Um, that said, there's a whole hell of a lot of millions and millions of people yeah. who are really happy that I didn't. Yeah. Uh, How do you, what do you tell someone right now? Because they hear you say that, right? And they're thinking, I've been doing this for, I mean, at that point, how long have you been doing it for? I was, I'd say... Probably somewhere between three and five years. Three and five years. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. If someone's like, you know, Josh, I've been doing this for five years. I saw you didn't throw in the towel and look what happened. How do I know when to quit and start something else or keep going? I love you, man. And, and like your questions are so good. Thank you. I, appreciate uh, the, I, I, think, I think it comes down to what is it that you want? I at the time you wanted pain. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I wanted. I was ha- you know I was running my own company. I didn't have a boss. Yeah. You know I was making enough money to 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 pay for my wife and I to live in a nice house in Colorado and have a decent life. Okay, so it was um, making money at the time. It wasn't uh, like it was making okay. money, but it okay. wasn't like hey, this I'm is not- like the lifestyle phase. It was so, a total lifestyle. Okay, because yeah. I want to go back to the hobby phase, but go on. Yeah, so yeah, that when how long did the hobby phase last? Because I remember I, hearing you made a shift at one point. Hobby was probably two years. Two I years, hobby which was, is still, yeah. Hobby was maybe two to two and a half. I, that was while I was teaching. It was part-time. It was on the side. When I quit the teaching job, when I moved to California, and I said, I'm going to full-time run bigger pockets, right. I think I'm now in lifestyle business. I was still in hobby mindset, though. I, w- I wasn't building business systems. I was I was still like, hey, cool, I'm making a little bit of money. Yeah. Uh, how do I keep making a little more money and, and hey, maybe if I keep at this, I can make enough money that my wife doesn't have to work a job. Yeah. Cool. At um, what point did you start making some money on the site? I mean, 
first month. Really? Because of Google? I mean, I up, was this Google AdSense? Thank God for Google, man. Okay. Thank God for Google. Yeah, I put yeah. on some Google AdSense ads and you know, whether it was a dime or a quarter, I mean, I, I remember it was something, yeah. my wife just called me out the other day on it. She's like, Oh, you were so excited when you got that first check of like, you know, a quarter or you five dollars and 44 cents. Nickel. Yeah. I, yeah. I was, I was ecstatic yeah. and I wish I had the damn check to this day. Um, because why'd she call you out? What'd she call you out on? Actually, it wasn't my mom. It was, it wasn't my wife. It was my mother-in-law. Okay. Cause she was, she was giving me a little pat on the back at how well we've done and how far we've come. But, you were uh, being modest instead of celebrating. Is that why she? I'm always modest. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm self-promoting, but I but I'm very I am very very yeah. modest. I, no, I agree. You're down to earth guy. Together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at the time, you were saying um, you, uh, as far as the the AdSense, and then uh, you were still at what point was the hobby phase kind of? You were still in the hobby phase. I was like two years. It was, I'd say, two, two and a half. Yeah. I, I'm in Colorado. Um, I think there was a, a point where I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, we're making enough money that you know this this is becoming reasonable money here. Yeah. Um, you know, by reasonable, I'm I'm making you can cover 20, your expenses. thirty grand, maybe a year. Um, you know, I could cover my expenses. I could kind of pay. I didn't have a car. You know, I mean, I I was living really lean. Um, you know, I I think frugality is is built inside of me as yeah. well so you know i think if you're frugal in your life uh it makes everything a whole lot easier it makes building wealth easier building businesses easier you name it but mm -hmm. uh yeah and then then it became this lifestyle and i'm like oh okay cool well now i'm making money now i'm running this business again still not thinking of it as a business i was like it was just like i'm running a community it's making me money i'm gonna keep doing it i want to grow it i'm gonna keep working at my craft, learning how to build a community, mm -hmm. learning internet marketing, which wasn't like an industry at this point, yeah. you know, figuring it all out and, and, um, growing this, this platform that I built. And, uh, so, you know, a few years of that. What was, so you went from AdSense, what was the next turning into a business monetization that you were yeah. trying to do? AdSense was really, I mean, AdSense was the bread and butter for mm. the first. Yeah, that's a lot of AdSense. Seven, money. eight years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were making, we're making, making good money, making good money with yeah. AdSense for sure. And, and, um, you know, ironically today we're trying to kill our AdSense, which is really funny. But, um, yeah, it was AdSense. You know, eventually we, we, uh, I started doing advertising sales. Uh, so, so sold ads on the platform, sold ads in the newsletter. You know, today we sell ads in our podcast. Um, we did that. We created paid memberships, not for content, um, because you know the, we started Bigger Pockets from the mindset of you know we don't want people paying for for content. The the constant upselling yeah. of these yeah. guys. And you industry. curate it, so like it's it's got to be curated by you type of thing. We create it. Oh, you create it. Create. We curate, but primarily we create it. But we're never going to charge for that content. You know that we we create. We want yeah. You know, our blogs are free. Our community is free to access and free to view for anybody. You don't even yeah. need an account to do it. Yeah. I wanted to democratize the information space because it was a walled garden yeah. that was owned by you know a small select group of people. Yeah. So we opened the doors and said, okay, well now that we've done that, hey, we can just change our model and start charging people for it. But that would go completely against everything that uh, I built this thing to do. Right. And and so. You know, and and that's been a path, something that's kind of followed us along the way. We forego revenue in a lot of cases, um, because uh, doing so is better for our yeah. users. Yeah, your values aren't make the most money possible. It's create, you know, non scammy information that will give people, you know, good solid real estate advice. Well, that's that, and and that's obviously shifted and transformed over the past eleven years. Yeah. I mean, now we offer tools. We offer you know, we've got a publishing business with, with books, you know, you know, regular books. Yeah. They're not $997 books. They're, you know, <laughs> that you could pick them up on Amazon. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're really trying to create just this one stop destination where, where the real estate investor can come and, you know, they, they can learn, they can find partners, they can find yeah. deals, they can find opportunities, they can, uh, get tools that they need to be successful. And, you know, the beauty is we've got you know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of members, over a million folks a month coming through on the platform. Yeah. We've got 
many, 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 many bigger pockets millionaires, people who've literally built yeah. million dollar businesses on the back of bigger pockets. Um, you know, we've helped countless people quit jobs, you know, to become full time real estate investors. We're, you know, we're this, you know, we're a community of people who are passionate about uh, becoming uh, financially secure through the use of real estate. And people are so giving and so helpful to one another. It's, it's unbelievable. There's very few places online or off, I believe, that are even remotely close where people just, they'll tell you everything. They'll tell you all their quote unquote secrets. There's no secrets. Right. right. There aren't secrets. Yeah. I mean, to build this, I don't want to give people a picture like we go from hobby to lifestyle and you're not sitting on the couch with your legs up. I was. Waking up whenever you want, but you're hustling at this time. Oh, yeah. I was so, waking so up. What's a day look like for you during this so hustle? Lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so lifestyle, uh, pre-kids, I get up, um, you know, I'm in my underwear and T-shirt sitting on the couch with my laptop and I'm pretty much on there all day. Yeah. On there all day, you know, learning, connecting, communicating, um, really a lot, a lot, a lot of learning, a lot of outreach and uh, but, you know, all day, you know, watch some TV, eat some dinner, go out, do whatever, and then come back and I'm working all yeah. night. Uh, have my kids. I'm working from home, taking care of them. You know, it's kids' time, then work. But it was it was kind of uh, this this con- confused I, – I, every, every, my work went everywhere with me. Right. So I couldn't travel without having my laptop. Yeah. I, I, I ate, slept, yeah. and did yeah. everything else – bigger pockets um what was the craziest like when someone would think they saw you in that situation working with your laptop they think what are you crazy what was the craziest kind of scene to date date, my family still gives me crap about it it wasn't a scene it was my entire life this Mm -hmm. was my life for years Mm -hmm. it was exceptionally unhealthy um i i always had my laptop always working like you know we'd go travel to california and my laptop was on my lap you know right after holiday dinner you know the the craziest scene was my daughter uh my daughter got salmonella she was two i think at the time admitted to the hospital Mm. um she was in isolation for eight days wow for eight days i did not leave her room i am sitting and working in this hospital room for eight days Mm. you know granted when she's awake i'm hanging out with her but like you know she was awake and asleep awake and asleep but when she was a, uh, you know, when she was asleep, I'm I'm working away, sitting in the hospital, you know, till all hours of the night, right. um, while while she's there, and and so, you know, my family gives me a hard time today. They're like, oh, you know, actually, it's less a hard time. It's more, it's so nice to see how you've changed. Mm. It's so nice to see the transition, and and I'll tell you the transition because I know that's your next question. Yeah. I stopped and I realized what I was doing. <laughs> I finally. What were finally, you doing? Just too much I, I was burning out yeah i was it was like you know i had no i had nothing i had no life i had you know that's all i was doing and, yeah. and so um was I there went, a rock bottom at that point or did, the rock bottom was i was working 80 100 hours a week right. and i i started to hate bigger pockets i started to hate um my job i started to to hate being an entrepreneur i I kind of hated everything. I didn't hate myself. I mean, I was never like this self-loathing right. you know, person, but I just, I, I was finding myself unhappy. And so yeah. I knew I had to change something. Yeah. Um, hired a consultant, um, said, hey, you know, help me change my world. You know, what do we need to do here? And, you know, we, we looked at the business. How could we change the business? We looked at uh, the website. You know, what... Is the website too complicated? Is it too this? Is it too that? Made a lot of tweaks on that. Yeah. What was it before? You know, I, I love, I know there's like a really direct intent with the messaging. And I'm wondering where it came from. Like life wasn't meant to be lived in a cubicle. How did you come up with that? That's something we came up with at some point about a year and a half ago, okay. two years ago. I mean, we've always kind of been going in that direction. But, yeah. um, you know, I... I I got to give some credit to Tim Ferriss. I think Four Hour Work Week has mm-hmm. uh, the the millennial mindset has really transformed society. Mm. Um, I, I think you know people are starting to realize that uh, life isn't all work and no play. You know mm-hmm. you 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 know you work until you're 65 and then you enjoy life. Mm. I think we're all coming to the realization that hey, you know we want to enjoy life a little bit more now. Right. Um, while we're still kind of quote unquote young. And, uh, so 
um, we just found that our users wanted the, the people who came to real estate and use real estate, their purpose is financial freedom. Their yeah. purpose is, is lifestyle. Right. Their purpose right. is they want to get out of the grind. And so yeah. I think that's, we, we, yeah. we think that speaks yeah. to people. I mean, I'm wondering, did you sit in a room and think about this? Did you just survey the users and you're like, oh, this person said life wasn't meant to be living in a cubicle. That's a perfect thing. You know, did it come from, where did it come from? I don't know. I have you no know, idea. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, we're, our, you know, we're a team of ideas. We are constantly throwing ideas against the wall, constantly experimenting, yeah. constantly failing. You know, the, the Michael Jordan quote about all the missed shots. Right. You know, uh, that's us. We, we, we screw up a whole hell of a lot. Um, and it's it's because we try everything. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the best advice a consultant gave you? It wasn't one thing. It was, you know, hey, maybe it was one thing. You know, it was you need to you're you're stuck in the business. You've got to work on the business. Mm -hmm. um, remember, we're 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 now seven to eight years into running this company, right. this website. And is it how many people at this point? You and oh, it was just, two, two. Yeah, from day one, from from year like one, from a year in until about then, it was one me and and a single developer. Yeah. Um, we went through a few. Um, and then, you know, t today I, I still work with uh, one of the guys that was working with me back then. And, um, yeah, it was two of us. Uh, I did everything. I did marketing. I did PR. I did community management, customer service. I did every job yeah. outside of engineering. And he built the website. I product managed. I spec'd it. I mean, he, he helped for sure on a lot of that stuff. But on at anything non-engineering, I did it all. Yeah. And so... You could probably imagine that you know, seven eight years in, we had, we had a big community. We had a lot going on. I was doing everything. Wow, hundred hours, eighty, hundred hours a week. It, it's not sustainable. Not sustainable. So you know, it was look, work on the business. Stop, you know, stop doing everything. Get the right person in. Hire the right person, yeah. and and start building it. And and I did. And I got, I hired the absolute perfect person. Um, he's unbelievable. He's my co-host of the podcast, mm. Brandon. Mm. And he was your uh, first hire. He was Besides my first non-technical I mean. hire. Yeah. Wow. Good work. Yeah. Uh, so How did, I, he was one of the members of the of the. He was a member. Uh, yeah. Bigger Pockets had made him independently wealthy. Um, uh, That's a good six. Yeah, a good testimonial. Yeah. Yeah, he was one of our success stories. Yeah. And and so he was a he was a writer on our blog, and. You know, I kind of put it out to the universe that we're trying to hire and he expressed interest and we kind of, you know, for the next bunch of weeks, maybe it was a month, month and a half, we just kind of talked about the job yeah. and, you know, how it would work. And, you know, man, I, w I wish I wish I had all those conversations written down because it was it was a lot of fun. It was kind of like dating, to be honest. Um, and we realized that. You know, we test it out. So you were brainstorming him. because that was since that was your first hire. You were trying to figure out what should this guy even do? What should I oh, yeah. take take off my table? What was yeah? What did you decide at that time? So he took over. Um, he took over uh, uh, content, the, the blog, and uh, he took over. He started to take over community management from mm -hmm. me, so I could focus on the other stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're. It's scary how much brainstorming we do, um, and and. You know, some may say that's, you know, you do too much, but I, I think it's great. I think it's healthy. I think yeah. that's how new ideas are born. Um, and um, anyway, he led to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, today. What did uh, you start to focus on? Like after you said, do this, what did you say? Oh, I need to be focusing on this. I will tell you that I'd never had that conversation with myself until much later. Hmm. I think it was still um, patching the boat mode. It was it. not that we were sinking. We weren't. We were right. growing. We were making more and more money. Right. But I was overwhelmed with work. It's like spilling over of a glass, sort of oh, like yeah. trying to keep everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we had him. We had to make enough money. You know, once he was on board, to be able to get the next person, yeah. which led to the next person, and so on and so forth. And you know that that kind of became finding the holes and filling the holes, um, and. I'd say really only in the last year and a half or so, a year, year and a half, two years, um, was there this lights on, we want to take this thing and turn it into not just the biggest and best website in our industry, which we were pretty close to becoming at that point anyway, um, 
but I want I want to build the best company on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to help as many people as humanly possible um, realize that real estate is a means to building wealth. Um, I want to have happy employees. Yeah. I want to build the culture, and I don't know my head from my you know what, as it pertains to actually building a company. Yeah. So, just like everything else, I mean, we became I became an expert at communities, and I, I'd say probably built one of the best on the planet. We launched a podcast. You know, at first it was, uh, let's try this out. Now I'd What say, made you decide to try it out? Uh, you know, we looked at all the, our philosophy was always, um, I knew that in order to build the brand, and, and I've always been focused on a brand, um, you needed, we needed to be in as many places as possible. I wasn't going to get in the New York Times to, to write about me uh, by hoping. Um, I, I wasn't going to get, you know, all this press organically, uh, I had to make my own news. I had to make my own press. I had right. to make my own presence. And so how do you do that? Well, there's all these cool marketplaces. There's Google. So we were doing that, yeah. getting lots of search traffic. You know, there's YouTube. Well, that's the number two search engine. We got to be on YouTube. There's, you know, podcasts are hot and everybody's talking about them. Let's try it. Yeah. Let's try it. So you guys have been you know, very successful with that. I mean, you guys fluctuate oh, yeah. in the top 10 business iTunes. Top 10 business. We, 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 We've hit uh, up to 114 of every single podcast on the planet hmm. uh, on iTunes. That's amazing, yeah. So, you know, we became an expert at, at this. We became an expert at podcasting. We launched a publishing company, become an expert at that. Everything that we do, we want to be the best at, and I want my team to be the best yeah. at. Yeah. And now, really, the focus is and has been, at least for the past yeah. little bit, how do we build an amazing company with an incredible culture yeah. that's attracting Right. incredible people and you know i want to be i want to be on that admired list of the most admired companies i you know not because of ego but because yeah. um, i think we can do it right and i think we should do it yeah i mean so josh go back to the question with advice so people are hearing this like how do you know when to stop or not stop i don't know when to stop yeah i, I mean you don't know <laughs> no but oh, someone's oh, coming question. to you yeah someone's coming to you Okay, so look, I would say stop and look at what you're doing. If, you, yeah. if, if your business, you know, if you're running yourself ragged and you've got a lifestyle business, re- re- remember like, you know, and we, we tell people this in real estate, you have to know what your why is. You have to know what your goal is, yeah. right? Um, if you, you know, for a real estate investor, for example, you may just want to own one or two properties that give you a couple bucks to pay for your car payment. Yeah. Cool. You know, but there's people who want to be big right. magnates in real estate and they, they keep yeah. going. But you, you kind of just... started off like that, right? You may have been that person that I just want to make a couple of car payments. And now you're at the point where I want to build the best possible company on the I planet. I want to compete against the fortune companies. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Well, I, I, I'm competitive. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's one of those like, hey, we realize that we're we're really good at lots of things. And there's nothing that stops us from getting better um, but ourselves. And, and so um, for me, I think I've transformed a lot. And, and my transformation is uh, to, if I'm sitting still, I'm not happy. So, mm-hmm. you know, the question has been thrown at me, why not just, you know, stop growing? Why not just kind of stay status quo, build the best company you can at the size that you are, try not to grow the community, don't worry about it, serve your serve your customers, serve mm-hmm. your... your um, Why do people ask that? Because people ask lots of questions. Oh, I'm just curious. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it, wouldn't have cro- it wouldn't have crossed my mind, actually. It's like, why stop growing? Uh, you know, why, why not? I, uh, so, you know, for us, for me in particular, that's the joy. That's yeah. the excitement. You know, today, I, I get a thrill beyond the, um, you know, constant... Um, emails telling us how we're changing people's lives. I mean, yeah. that's the one thing that actually kept me going in all the really dark periods was knowing that I'm helping people. Yeah. But, you know, what keeps me going, what keeps me doing what I do, um, I like learning. I like trying new things. I like I like evolving. Uh, I like becoming better at um, stuff. And frankly, you know, I like being the underdog. I like, you know, being... Yeah. Uh, misjudged and undercalculated and, and and at the end of the day i i think my story proves that anybody could do anything that they want you know mm-hmm. you, you just have to you know it's trite it's overplayed but it's a thousand percent true if you hustle 
you can do it. Yeah. You can. You just, you know, you, you have to be able to endure the really hard periods. And whether those are mental or financial or whatever it is, you have to be able to endure it. So yeah. to the guy who's struggling and thinking about shutting down, what's the end game? What does it look like? Is it, you know, that one pizza shop that you opened is in trouble and you can't figure out how to make money? Well, maybe something's fundamentally wrong in how you're running the business and your marketing and your location. I mean, there, there's lots of things. Do you want to fix it? Well, then you got to step out of yourself and stop uh, because we're all guilty of it. Yeah. You know, we all say, oh, it's somebody else's fault. It's, you know, you have to stop that and you have to say, okay, what am I doing wrong here? Yeah. You know, what, what mistakes are we making uh, that's not allowing this to, to get any further? Maybe yeah. it was the idea itself. Maybe there wasn't, you know, maybe you're, you're, you didn't do enough research to find out that there was a market for the product or the, the company or the business. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, selling ice to the igloos is, is going to be a challenge. Right, um, right. So ice to the Eskimos. Eskimos, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that helps. Yeah. So I have two last questions, Josh. I know we're right at the hour point. Thank you sure. so much for your time with this. Um, I love hearing about this hustle and journey. Um, you know, since Inspired Insider, I always ask um, about the lowest point and then the proudest moment. What's What's been the lowest point in the business for you? Uh, let's see, lowest point, I'd say, you know, some of those moments where I was hating the business, uh, when it was a quote unquote lifestyle business, but I had no life. Um, I, I'm still, you know, I'll readily admit, and, and by the way, don't, don't be me to anybody listening to the show. Um, I've taken, uh, the sacrifice is what I've the taken, sacrifice I'm question. trying to think maybe two or three at most days off in the past eight years. Wow. I, 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 you know, I work every single day, um, seven days a week, not healthy, not okay. And I've been working for the past three to, to stop doing that. So I got yeah. to the point where there was so much stuff and so is much. Is that time. even possible for you at this point to oh, stop yeah. doing it? I'm very excited about it. Oh yeah. Okay. So I, I'm hiring an assistant right now. And, and so I've, I've, I've handed the vast majority of, of the stuff to other amazing people who work for me. And the last thing that now I have to let go of is the day-to-day, -day, you know, um, administrative stuff that I, uh, that's left over for me. And, and so um, as soon as I have my assistant, I'm very excited to be going on a vacation uh, mm. with the family. Where are you going to go? Uh, we're doing a cruise. Nice. Doing a cruise. But... Uh, yeah, so don't do that. So I mean, it's like, that grind, the constant grind. But you can't do it if you don't love it. Yeah. You know, you can't do it right. if you don't love it and if you're not passionate about it. Um, and and uh, yeah, I, I heard a great quote and I'm going to totally butcher this thing. It Go was ahead. Today, well, it was on people Facebook. People will look it up later. But, yeah, yeah, it was, and I don't even know who the hell said it, but it, it was about um, uh, hard work is... Um, uh, hard work doing something you hate is stress. Hard work doing something you do is, I think it was passion or something or, or I, uh, love or passion. Love. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I think that's totally true. If, if you, if you're excited about what you do, you know, it's never going to be a pain in the neck. Yeah. It's never, you know, unless you work in a hundred hours a week and yeah. you know, about to collapse. Yeah. I mean, from the low point standpoint too, what was your wife's influence on that? You know, I'm sure she was a kind of sounding board support. What was her role as you're grinding and building the company? Um, always supportive, always supportive um, in whatever my decision was. Um, we, we probably had a dozen to 20 conversations, um, not just like hypotheticals, but, oh, and it was, it was really in the probably year four to seven um, for, yeah, four to seven, uh, where I, um, I was ready to quit. I was like, this is it. Let's, I, I think now's the right time. Hmm. You know, we would sit and we'd talk it over and, you know, what'd she say? Yeah. I'll support you, whatever you want to do. You know, I got your back and not necessarily what I wanted to hear. What did you want to hear? It was, it was what I wanted to hear. Yeah. I, I think what I wanted to hear Did you was, want her to talk you out of it? Did you want oh, her to I be like, yes, yeah, quit? To, yeah, I think I wanted her. I, I, I think half the time I wanted her to actually say, yeah, quit. And I think the other half, yeah. I wanted her to talk me out of it. Yeah. Um, 
but I'm glad she said what she said. I'm glad. Yeah, that's a good answer. I'm it was about, because yeah. it makes me make the decision. She right. she can't be responsible. So right. <laughs> very smart. Right. So and this high point. Yeah, proudest moment. Yeah. Um, I'd say every every day has has high points. You know when we when we yeah. you know when we learn that people are being successful from what we're yeah. doing. You know, yeah. What's been the biggest success story that that makes you proud? I'd say it's really hard to narrow this down because yeah. I mean, and you know, I'm modest, but like we help a whole hell of a lot of people. Yeah. And I mean, here, the podcast for me is one of the most fun things to do because uh, a lot of times we just get those success stories and get into a lot of depth from our people, like right. how big pockets help transform their lives. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I don't know. Just, I mean, looking at the numbers is just outstanding. I mean, we're, we, we, last year, you know, we reached well over 10 million people. It's amazing. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the site's one of the biggest in the space. The podcast is the top in the industry. You know, l last month in December, I don't know when this comes out, but in December, we launched two new books on our publishing business. And in the period of 30 days, we sold over 10,000 copies of the books. Wow. We are not, this was not through a publisher. This was independent. Right. We're a small independent publishing house, which I, I'm pretty sure would have put us on the, on the Wall Street Journal list. Um, you know, and knowing that we, we do this, we have the capacity. Right. It's just, just you launch it to your audience and it happens. Well, it doesn't just happen. I mean, we work our butts Well, off. I mean, it's happened over 11 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It took yeah. a long time. Right. It took a long right. time. So just all of it looking, I don't know. I mean, you, you said it earlier. It was, it's my baby. It, yeah. it is. And, and so I have so much pride when I look at all that we've accomplished. And, and I, I don't know that there's any singular thing that I'm most proud of. I, I think yeah. I'm most proud of bigger pockets. I yeah. think, you know, it, it's really becoming, yeah. um, a, a, um, a platform, um, that helps people around the world. Yeah. And, 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 you know, whether it's, there's a there's bigger pockets groups around the world yeah. as as an example like these organic groups that you know come together because of people who are passionate we've got we've got a group in South Korea that's got hundreds of people really? wow. once a month and talk real estate there's a new one in Japan now in Tokyo I uh, I believe they're all over the United States it's it's amazing we're impacting people everywhere on the planet yeah wow yeah it's amazing Josh, this has been fantastic. Um, where should we point people towards? Obviously, biggerpockets.com. Any other places they should check out? Uh, so check out Bigger Pockets. Check out the podcast at biggerpockets.com slash podcast. Go on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever. Leave us a rating review. Go and leave Jeremy for the Inspired Insider. If you are listening to this and getting any value out of this or any other interview that Jeremy has done, I, I demand that you go and leave him a rating and review that will help him grow this podcast. This guy, and, and I'm not just saying this to kiss his ass. I've done a whole hell of a lot of interviews. Hands down, I think you are the best interviewer I've ever wow. uh, done an interview wow. for. It's, Thank you, Josh. I appreciate amazing. that. Um, check out the podcast. Um, and if you're curious about real estate, we wrote this thing called The Ultimate Beginner's Guide for yeah, real estate. Yeah, tell people there's a couple books you have on, on Amazon. What, what are those and where should they check them out? Start with The Ultimate Beginner's Guide. It's okay. free. It's totally free. It's biggerpockets.com slash UBG. And it literally is, it's, it's, um, it's like this eight chapter book, really pretty brief. And it tells you everything you need to know about real estate investing and, you know, house flipping, you know, is it something that makes sense for me? Buy yeah. and hold some of the other strategies. It teaches you the fundamentals. And, you know, once you have those fundamentals, you can make a decision if you actually want to get in and how you want to get in, what your path yeah. might want to be. Yeah. Um, we've got books in the store. We've got a book on flipping houses, book on investing in no and low yeah. uh, money, book on rental property investing, managing properties. We're going to have a whole lot more coming out as we grow our yeah. publishing business. We just hired somebody to run our publishing company today. Congratulations. Well. Thank you. Um, but that's it. And check out, you know, yeah. go keep listening to Jeremy's yeah. shows because he's amazing. I appreciate it. So, thank you so much for your kind words. It sure. really means a lot, Josh. And, and uh, this has been fantastic. I'm leaving about... 30 questions on the table right now that I'm just going to end here, but uh, have me back. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. You know, really. So thank you again. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, like
like a peach if you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand